Welcome to ABG, Asian Boss Girl, a podcast for the modern day Asian American woman. I'm Janet. I'm Helen. And I'm Mel. Friendships, one of the most important elements in our lives. From the people you go out with on Friday nights to the individuals you can always depend on during tough times. Some can say our friends are as important as family. From a young age, we are taught the idea of friendships and its basic foundation and needs. But as we grow older and our interests, values, and where we are in life change, our relationships with our friends change as well. Some remain present in our lives and some relationships take other forms. In today's episode, we want to talk about the different types of friendships we had in our stages of life, what happens when you grow apart, and how we define a good friendship. I actually love this topic because I feel like unless you're living in a cave, mm-hmm. like everyone has <laughs> has friends, right? Yeah. And now that we're in our late 20s slash early 30s, we've had many groups of friends come in and out of our lives. So if you think about it, right, we had family friends starting off, right? That's true. We didn't have an option of who those people were. Right. <laughs> and then we had elementary school friends, mm-hmm. high school friends, college, post-college work friends, and then your post-college, maybe they're still college friends that are like your party friends mm-hmm. or whatever it might be, right? So every time you transition from one stage to another, you have a different group of friends. And I think we're also at a stage in life where you have a lot of major life events like weddings that you attend. Mm-hmm. And then the, you. it's interesting to see the spread of people that they will invite. That's what Janet's eyeing. I know. <laughs> the wedding guest. I think right now we're at the age where since we do go to weddings, a key way to define if a friend is meaningful in your life is like, well, they get invited to my wedding. Right. True. Yeah. Right? You ask me that all the time. You're like, who's going to be in your bridal party? I'm like, well, girl, that's a different I don't even know yet. That's a different level of friendship <laughs> right there, okay? But I'm like the guest too, that's, mm. right? So let's start from the basics then. Like, do you guys remember in high school, what did you look for in a friendship or who were your friends back then? Or, and also, are they still present in your life? So my high school friends are still my closest home friends. Mm. I think a lot of people say that their closest relationships form when you're in college. But for me, it was in high school. And my high school spanned from 7th grade to 12th grade. So oh, wow. five years, a long period of time. Mm-hmm. My beginning, like 7th grade friends were friends that came over from middle school. And I think it really mm-hmm. depends on where you also grow up. So I grew up in the inner city. And I would say that... Those friendships are a little bit more volatile because maybe your friends are like involved in other things that they can't really control or that impact their lives. And so my closest friends like got kicked out of school mm. slash they left on their own merit. So I'm no longer, I don't talk to them anymore. I don't even know where they are now. But my high school friends were my volleyball friends. Oh, of course. So I think once I started getting into sports and into things that interest me, I find other people that are also interested in those things and mm-hmm. those people are now some of my really close friends. What about you, Janet? Uh, I would say, so even prior to high school, if I think about like where I grew up and even as early as before I started school, I had, I lived on a street where there were like two or three other families with kids my age. And one of them I still keep in touch with today. Oh, wow. So she's known me since I was like three, I think since we were three years old. But during that period, I had also, you know, early elementary school had other best friends that have also fallen off because they moved to different countries or Mm -hmm. we just kind of lost touch. And then if I think about high school, I would say I kind of, I had like a core group of more like academic girlfriends, I guess, like from classes. So that those are girls that I still keep in touch with today. But I also, I floated around a lot because I did stuff like dance team and French club and just very disparate kind of groups. So I had a lot of like, I had maybe core group of friends that, you know, you'd go to like dances with or you would kind of hang out with more. And then kind of secondary level friends, if that's what you would I mean, yeah. you call With different, different interests, so. Acquaintances. Acquaintances, mm. yes. How about you, Mel? I'm trying to remember back. So two of my best friends are from middle school, but then now they also went to my high school, but we remained best friends ever since we were 10. Looking back now, the reason why we remain close best friends is because one of them actually was friends with my mom. Like they became friends because of us. Since our parents had that relationship, it was easier for us to maintain our friendship too. Okay. I but thought you th- said your friend was friends with your mom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my mom's pretty cool too, so that could also be it. So your friend's mom was close to your mom. Yeah. My best friend Vicky, was her mom was friends with my mom and mm-hmm. my grandma. So mm-hmm. I think... At a young age, our families would hang out together. And so we remained really close throughout the years. Um, My other friends came from choir. And I was really involved in choir since middle school. But in high school, I was really involved. So my close girlfriend from choir, I am still keep in touch with. Like When I think of my home friends, it's actually a group of dudes that I went to middle school with. And they always managed to stay in touch with me throughout the years. 
So they did a really good job of maintaining that connection with me. Mm. So I, whenever I go back home, I always like do a Christmas potluck with them or, or Thanksgiving. So they're right. someone I go home to. Those are the main people in my life that actually I keep in touch with from high school. But I do think these friendships, I don't want to say they get tested, but they take a different form when you enter college, right? Right. Because I think high school, that's a part of your life when you're trying to fit in, like trying to find yourself. But college is like a different stage of that, right? You're about to enter this new world, being an adult, and college is like your playground to do that. So I think for me, a lot of my core friends came from college. What'd you guys say? It's the same for you guys? So my core friends are from high school. It's funny because oh. freshman year of college, I was roommates with my best friend from high school. Oh. So we, and I think I might've brought this up at some point before, but when we first got to BC, we were like, okay, we're not going to hang out with any of the like Asian students. We're not going to join like the Asian orgs. Mm-hmm. And we hung out with our floor mates a lot, which was very diverse. So that was my core group of friends in the beginning. And then a couple of months in, someone reached out to me on campus. I think they were like handing out flyers. Oh, you got targeted yeah. as an Asian. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, come to our event. It might have been Chinese New Year because it's probably like a couple of months in after school. And I was like, oh, what the heck? Let's just go. And so I dragged my friend to go with me. When I got there, because when you're away from home, mm-hmm. you feel very like you're in a new world, right? So when, when mm-hmm. I went to this event and I saw like lion dancing and like different types of foods like Chinese foods I was like oh my gosh this feels like a little bit of home mm-hmm. familiar. Um, yeah I was like it's my mom here like, <laughs> like who's making this food is she under the lion mask yeah. <laughs> mom is that you but like so at that point I started connecting with a lot of people there and it's just nice when sometimes you don't have to like explain your past and they kind of just yeah. understand your background and have gone through similar things as you so after that point, I started getting much more involved with like CSA, Chinese Students Association. And that's where a bulk of my friends from college are from. Mm-hmm. So we got really close. And it's funny because even though we tried to neglect it the first year, come senior year, I became the co-president of CSA and my roommate was vice president of Asian Caucus. So oh it's my like, God. Yeah, it's awesome. We couldn't avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's where my close group of college friends are from. I would say for me, so in college, I had one friend that I met through classes and we mostly bonded just because we struggled together (laughs) through all like the math courses and the econ courses. And then another really close girlfriend that I met through uh, roommates. I think she was actually a friend of one of my freshman roommates. And then we formed a really strong relationship and then ended up being in some like clubs, leadership roles together, and then then also being roommates. And then I was also on the dance team. So that was... uh, Uh, (laughs) There's a lot of uh, relationships and friendships I made from there that have also proven to last the test of time. Uh, Okay, so for me, I think I would categorize my friends from college in two groups. I think the first group was... I was really involved in the Taiwanese American Student Association at UCSD. I went in knowing that I wanted to be involved in a cultural org because I felt like I needed some part of my culture and identity to be at school. So a lot of my friends like were from that org, and they're still my close friends today. Um, another big part of my friend group in college was actually my roommates. That was really unexpected for me because for those of you who don't know, I actually went to community college for the first two years of college, and then I met my roommate, Tiffany, and she was like, oh, I'm transferring to UCSD. Do we just want to, like, room together? And I was like, oh, okay. And we were, like, complete opposite. She's, like, very athletic. She wakes up early to work out. And I'm, like, in bed lounging all day. Like, very complete opposites. But then she's like, oh, I have my high school friend. My best friend wants to – she's also got UCSD. She wants to join in on the room for us. Is that okay? I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. And lo and behold, like, our roommate situation was perfect, though. Like, mm-hmm. the dynamic was – I can't even describe it. Like, we were, all of us were like, we're so lucky to have each other because we were the right balance of like, hey, let's party, let's have fun. But also, we really support each other within our growth in college and like helped each other pursue what we wanted to do afterwards as well. So really encouraging. And they have always been there for me. And to this day, they're probably one of my closest friends. It's like bridesmaid status. (laughs) I know. So yeah, both groups, I still keep in contact with most of them to this day. So this, I mean, this all sounds like super like flowery and great. Like we have good friends. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But have you guys ever faced a breakup with friends? I think when it comes to like dating relationships, we put so much more energy in trying to like figure out problems and figuring out like what you can do for me better, right? And what I can do for you to make it it, like more balanced and make Mm -hmm. it work. But I feel like with friendships... Maybe it's like a feeling of it feeling like it's more fleeting. Like Mm. if it were to escape, then you can just replace that friend without feeling as emotional of like a tie to that person as you would to like a boyfriend or girlfriend, significant Mm -hmm. other, right? Yeah, I can't recall many moments where I've had like a sit down, let's talk about our friendship. I have one 
but that I can talk about later. But as as you get older too, you start to realize that friendships it takes a lot of effort, right? Any type of relationship. And so I haven't had like conversations where we were sitting down and talking about our relationship but through life events like traveling together or doing things where you kind of start to butt heads a little bit sometimes Mm -hmm. the way that I treat those is to have a direct conversation and to talk about what's happening beneath the surface of the thing that's happening right so that's where you address the core part of your relationship where it's like maybe hey they have a tendency to do this or I have a tendency to react this way and addressing the relationship in that way so similar to if you have a romantic relationship, mm-hmm. basically if you get into a fight to not brush it off, but to address it. I, w- I would say I've had more of those conversations. What's like an example, a specific example of a type of conversation that you had to have with someone? So I traveled with a really good friend of mine to, uh, we went around France and it was like a two week trip. And this is a girl that I, I've gone on multiple, like very long two week trips with. And for anyone who's like, spending a lot of time with someone else in a foreign country that really tests any type of relationship Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so there was one time where we got into a slight argument where um, I had booked the Airbnb and there was some like headbutting with the host and she felt like the host was being really rude and I though I also agreed the host was being rude I kind of saw the flip side because I had also I've had experience of being a host on Airbnb and because it was under my account name I was like I would prefer to handle it in this way and she's like no we gotta like you know like fight for this and that and then and we actually got into a really really big argument around that and it lasted for like a couple of days and it's because it addressed the core issue of a personality difference that we have which is that Mm. I have a tendency if I confront something I would rather be more diplomatic about stuff and also I was thinking cognizantly of like if I push anything they can leave a bad review for me Mm -hmm. but her personality is very much like no one steps over us like right like you have to fight so we were able to sit down and like talk about that so that's an example of like an incident that then prompted like because that would come up maybe multiple times in other ways in our relationship Mm -hmm. right if we didn't address it and so what was the outcome of it did it ever come up again and you guys are kind of laugh about it or yeah um no I mean I think it was just it helped us understand like hey this is how I prefer to handle stuff and this is how you prefer to handle stuff so when we travel now it's like whoever was managing that thing you respect their style Mm. right so so mature. <laughs> are, you guys still, are you guys still friends right now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's one of my best friends. Oh, wow. wow. That's good. I mean, that's one example. And she's a very good friend of mine because I feel like we can talk about that kind yeah. of stuff. Like anytime that we've had disagreements about stuff, we generally, we will be like, okay, we need to just talk about this or I need to, to address this. Because if you don't, then that's where aggression builds up and frustration. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and that's how like tension forms in a relationship and mm-hmm. then they break similar to Janet me and my best friend the reason why I think we're so close is we have the same type of problem solving approach we're both the type to want to address it right away and just not have to have issues anymore I don't think I have anyone in my life that I have like a tension building type relationship because I'm very straightforward naturally so if you don't have that personality we're not really meant to be friends you know what I mean yeah I had a really Mm -hmm. bad blow up of a relationship so back to when I was in college my CSA so I was co-prez and the guy that was also the co-prez my fellow (laughs) co-press, he was one of my best friends. And then we had a third best friend, also a guy. And so it was like the three of us, I think I mentioned this in the last episode or in a couple of episodes before that we were like called the tripod on campus because we were so close. And so then I had a boyfriend at Boston University. He was down the street. So every weekend I would be over there, right? And like trying to build and foster that relationship. And my co-press friend, he got annoyed and he didn't really like sit down and talk to me a lot. And it kind of all came out during our senior appreciation day for CSA, which is like one of the last days of your college experience Mm -hmm. where there's like a hundred people there, pretty much your whole CSA or your whole group. And they're going up and giving speeches. You sit on a chair in front of everyone and everyone's kind of looking at you and they'll they'll, like stand up and like say good things about you and like praise you, right? Mm -hmm. So when it was like time for him to go up, he decided that that was the best opportunity to just completely shit on me. Oh my God. And that was like one of the worst experiences because here I was thinking that, you know, this was going to be a great day. And then I was just like crying in the corner. And that was the first time I was just like, why couldn't you just talk to me before? But Mm -hmm. I don't know. In his mind, he decided that was the best point. So then after that event, we went to a restaurant. And so it was me and the the whole tripod, I guess. And so the neutral friend was trying to like talk us down. Although we weren't talking. We just weren't talking. It's like, so is anyone going to say anything? Yeah. And that was probably like the worst friend breakup I've ever experienced. Because 
I didn't know. I guess it just wasn't communicated between the two of us that it was that bad. But we kind of made up, like, a year ago. Um, So years later, there was... yeah. Yeah, at our neutral friend's wedding. That's the first time I saw him again. And we sat down and, like, had a full crying session about what happened. And I apologized for not being available. And he apologized for what he did that night. We still don't talk, but there's a part of me that it, it kind of sucks because he was the type of person that I just know I vibe with. Yeah. You know how there are people in your life, you're like, oh, you're my friend no matter what, right? Yeah. So a part of me feels like I understand where he's coming from because I wasn't available. Mm-hmm. And there are some people that will expect a friendship to be a certain way or that person be a certain person person in your life right but for 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 him that was just like a big disappointment for our neutral front friend he kind of understood that i wanted to go and build this relationship and he kind of respected that Mm -hmm. and i think i see that now in friendships too like for example when mel had a boo Mm -hmm. like mel disappeared a little bit right but at the same time i think because i went through that experience of hey i understand you want to go build that relationship but Mm -hmm. no matter what we're still going to be really good friends yeah so it's really how much uh weight i guess you put on a relationship in those in those cases have you guys had friendships that like so the ones from high school that you still keep in contact with how have those changed over the years as you guys have gone to college like different colleges and made new friends maybe moved to different cities for work i think as we get older there's there i put more weight on other values and things like we're, me and my two best friends are so different. Like, I'm very, like, passion-driven. And that's why I think in LA, a lot of my friends here, we connect a lot because we're on the same page with that. My best friends back at home have different values they put weight on. And I never doubted our friendships, but it's kind of questioning, like, would we still be best friends if it wasn't for all the years that we built? Mm. You know, versus, like, sometimes I feel like I connect with you two on a very different level than I connect right. with my best friends. But they've known me for 17 years, and with that, that's a different type of relationship versus, like, oh, we shared this passion with them. I share history. Right. Yeah. So I think that's, like, a lot of my friendships in high school I take that form of you are you know me because of our history, right. not because you know me. You don't know who I am completely right now. Right. I would say during, like, my late 20s, I had some major like relationship confrontations where some of the examples of like butting heads with really, really good friends, right? I mean, everyone goes through phases and maybe they're like doing things that you maybe don't agree with value-wise. Yeah. And I would sit there and question, oh my God, like does this mean that I need to have a conversation with them about ending our friendship because Mm -hmm. I disagree, right? And I'm sure they've had that with me as well. But the conclusion that I drew was like, if we have history together, no matter what, that is the validity of our of our relationship. Mm-hmm. I don't have to agree with how you live your life now or mm-hmm. because you might be going through a phase too, right? And knowing the difference between having friends that support you in your day-to-day life and that you're in your current value system versus people that you just, you, you grew up together or mm-hmm. they know you guys shared experiences that other people will never know. Yeah. And I think I feel the exact same way about you, Mel. So like every time I go home, my home friends are have a very different mindset from the, mm-hmm. I think, mindset of us three here mm-hmm. and the friends that we have in LA. But every time I go home it's like it feels like nothing's ever changed yep. right because mm-hmm. you do have that history and you do have that like those jokes and mm-hmm. you just vibe with them so well if you don't vibe with them and they're not on the same page as you mentally now then you're probably gonna like ghost them right yeah ghost the friends all the terrible <laughs> um but you probably wouldn't find time because you have limited time when you go home too you wouldn't yeah. use carve out that time to hang out with people that you're not vibing with right i think one common thing i'm realizing with all my friends in my life is the reason why we're so close is that they're very understanding of our situations like mm-hmm. from my friends here like we are very supportive of each other from the day-to-day like running the podcast and just our own personal lives but back at home like we have this like unspoken thing where i'm not gonna talk to you every day but you guys understand what i'm going through in la i you understand that i have my own life you have your own life but when we're back together it feels like nothing has changed because you guys mm-hmm. are so like supportive of me Mm -hmm. and each other so that's like a common thing I'm noticing as I'm getting older is that understanding quality for my friends there are friends that you have a lot of history together and you don't really communicate day to day or even week to week on Mm -hmm. but do you have friends that maybe you're not geographically in the same place living in different cities but that you still like chat with on like a weekly basis or like how do you manage those relationships yes i do have a friend that lives in new york we're just there and we talk almost every other day Ooh, Aka. <laughs> <laughs> but i think that's that for me like communication is key to maintaining yeah. a friendship for me like me and him like facetime every other day or we text but my other friends just having a group chat that i may i may not respond to right away but i could see it in a few days and be like okay cool i'm still like 
in the loop of what's going on. That helps me so much. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I feel like in the past I had friends who like I didn't make an effort to communicate with, but they'll always message me every few weeks. Like, hey, yeah. how's it going? Like, blah, blah, blah. And that kind of forced me to be like, wow, she really cares about our friendship. Yeah. And mm-hmm. let me invest in this as well. Mm-hmm. And that is another way for me to maintain friendships. Yeah. So I guess to answer Janet's question, yes, I have friends who live abroad that just talking or yeah. texting helps a lot. Thank God for like technology. technology. No, yeah. seriously. Like, um, so I have a... It's not a friend group. It's a family group with my sister and my two cousins. And yeah, my cousin today just sent us a picture of her face. And she's like, is my face symmetrical? <laughs> like, and you just feel like they're right in front of you. Yeah. Right? And it doesn't feel like there's a lot of distance in between. So it really is like people that you want to hang out with yeah. there's really no excuse which feels kind of yeah. bad because i know there are some people in my mind that i'm like these are good friends and i should hang out with them but i haven't found the time to yeah, yeah. but i do think as you get older like finding that time is really difficult though i think as you get older trying to maintain the friendships that mean a lot to you already so yeah. like you're trying to manage that right mm-hmm. yeah and i would say like in my in my 20s i was very much a person who is like focused on what was directly around me so that meant my relationships like i wasn't very like deliberate or thoughtful about it so it was just whoever's around me that's who I'm going to spend my time with that's who I check in with and it was because I had some very good friends who put in the effort that I kind of woke up and realized to Mel's point if they're reaching out like oh they must really care Mm -hmm. and then once I like shifted I think into like late 20s early 30s now I have like two to three friends who I've known for a year like over a decade now and we've literally not lived like in the same cities in all throughout like you know different years the last like 10 years and we actively make time for each other and that's through even if it's like sending texts or it's like gchat because gchat's mm-hmm. something that like i can do at work and yeah. it's like constant sometimes you know we would do emails and so the way we communicate has evolved throughout the years but just deliberately making that effort i think is is really important and it's something that you will think about more as you get older because time is really limited and the effort really gets more challenging yeah i agree there's another thing i think about with friendships like a struggle i have with certain friends is that i think everyone goes about friendships differently personally for me i have so many different groups of friends from my different pockets of life when i go back home for example i need to make sure i hit everyone when i'm back i have certain friends that i used to have where it's like why don't you have time for me? Why, why can't we just hang out? I'm like, well, dude, like, I'm sorry I only can hang out with you once when I'm back home, but there's other friends I have to see. Mm-hmm. And I think that sometimes could cause tension. I think as you get older, it's like maintaining those like different relationships and like communicating like, hey, like I, I have other friends. Like I don't do like that. But <laughs> Are you just doing it because you feel an obligation right, to meet right. up with them or because you actually really genuinely want to see those other people too? Yeah, I mean, I try, okay, when I go back, I mean, there's friends that I maintain like daily contact. Those are people I'll make sure to see. But people that are here and there, I'll do my best, but I can't guarantee anything. But the Asian guilt always comes in. I'm like, fuck, I, I'm sorry. Like I can't. That's that sounds something. like a lot of pressure you put on yourself. I mean, I, I think when I first started going home, I would try and like hit up everyone. Yeah. yeah. But then I realized I was making it more of a party for me instead mm. of it's like, yo, come see me. I'm back home, you know, versus now it's more like I'm just going to reach out to like three or four people. Yeah. And then if they come out, then be like, oh, is that other person available too? And if they want to come out, then sure. Right. Yeah. Like if I'm not going to, you know, create just a yeah. let's go out for Helen because she's back. For, That's true. For, you know, a weekend. When you live away from home and you go back to visit, because I had multiple of those experiences as well, and I have a lot of, like, different groups of friends, mm-hmm. so I would just get exhausted from trying yeah. to see everyone. And it is too easy to just be reactive, meaning if you posted, you know, anywhere, if people know you're back and then you get, like, 20 messages, yeah. I just, instead of thinking, do I really want to see them, it's just like, okay, yeah, let's meet them. Yeah, yeah. But that's when I feel awkward, because, like, when I post, I'm at home or I'm, I'm So anywhere. don't post, that's a secret. Well, that's, oh, that's, <laughs> so that's the secret is to kind of keep it on the DL you go and and then you you because home time you also need time for They're, your family I know and I, I feel like that is something that gets easily overlooked right when you if if it's like you just kind of follow by your social calendar I mean that's easier said than done for sure I think the hardest thing for me is like I purposely won't hit up people if I don't have time for them but then like hey are you in and then I have to be like yeah but I'm, I'm sorry I don't have much time yeah. for this or like and then you see me hang out with friends there, so there are ways that you can really manage that where you still like respond to them right but yeah. then you just say, hey, I'm really sorry. It's a short trip. Like, I don't think I'm going to be able to hang out. And if they see you hang out with other people, it's still like because you prearranged those, right. those meetings. Yeah. 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 And I felt a little bit that way, of that, too, when I was in New York. Remember, so my friend Evelyn, she came to visit like because Janet and I just finished a massage I'm like this is the only time I'm gonna have between massage and dinner yeah and she came and showed up and I was like in my mind I'm like that is a good friend Mm -hmm. she really just wanted to see me for like 15 minutes yeah that was it just to say hi just to say hi so that's really sweet yeah personally for me when I see someone traveling and didn't hit me up I don't say anything because I'm just like you 
obviously you're busy, so yeah. I'm not yeah. like, hey, why didn't you hang out right. with me? It's like, right. dude, I... Does it kind of, like, set it in your mind, though? You're like, oh, I understand where I fall in terms of priority for when you visit, if you don't hit me up. A little bit, but it's just, like... I think I'm at this point where it's like, okay, well, it's unspoken. Like, I'm aware. They are aware. Oh, social media. <laughs> yeah. Fucking social media. You deal with all these random things now. <laughs> Actually, it's kind of funny because... I feel like back in the day, you would send um, a photo of your food or whatever to like a group chat, right? Uh-huh. To say, this is what I'm eating. But now you're sending it out to the Everyone cloud. The world, yeah. And it's like, if you want to know what I'm up to, you look at what I'm eating <laughs> instead of me sending it directly to you. You're right. And it's weird because sometimes you feel like you have a friendship with someone, but you're, you actually don't hang out, but you just like DM each other a lot. Do you, you guys have those friends? Your DM friends? <laughs> DM friends? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I think for me, those are people who want to share a friendship with you. Mm, true. And like nothing has escalated to like, let's meet in person or something. Speaking of, hashtag no new friends. I think that's something I'm realizing as I get older is, is that a hashtag or Drake lyric? It's not Drake <laughs> lyric. <laughs> Fine. No new friends. <laughs> I think when I was in college, I'm like, yeah, I want to make new friends. But now that I'm older, I honestly don't invest in people knowing the fact that I can't physically yeah. invest time in them and then I feel kind of bad no I don't think you should feel bad I th- yeah as you get older your schedule is busier mm-hmm. and if you've already established like core people it's it's challenging to like make more time for people there is a part of me that does think though like we are really close and I think this podcast has helped us become really close yeah too, because we think about topics and we like go deep into yeah. topics and we learn a lot about each other but even like with our own friends who are probably listening here like i think about it too like i want to get on a deeper level with them yeah me too yeah when does that happen that happens like after we go out you know on yeah. a weekend and yeah. then we're sitting around and then we're talking but it's like do you remember what i'm saying mm-hmm. right <laughs> so it does yeah that's something i've been thinking about in terms of like getting deeper with the core group of friends that you've yeah. already surrounded yourself with yeah I could see that. It's hard to even, like, within within your friends in LA, it's, we haven't gotten to that deep level. But yeah. then it's like, imagine another person added into that group. It's like, shit. Another person to get deep with. Not saying I don't want to, but just, I think realistically, it's like, I No, I think, know. yeah, I do think that a good goal to have is to focus on the relationships you have right now and get deeper on those yeah. and not feel guilty about not making new friends, right? That's true. But still, I think it's still important to be open. Like, you don't want to be completely, no, completely closed agreed. off, right? Because just like a relationship, sometimes a friendship will enter your life when you least expect it, right? Exactly. Have you guys heard the quote, you're the average of the five people you spend the most yes. time with? Yeah, and that's something I thought a lot more about in the last couple of years. Yeah, I have too. a good-ass yeah. average, though. What's up, you two? <laughs> <laughs> I do think about that sometimes because you, yeah. you two would be part of my average, and I'm like, I have one person who's like super quirky and ridiculous. <laughs> who's that? Wild. You. <laughs> And I have Janet, who's, like, super composed. And, like, I'm not saying you're not composed, but Janet's a little bit more composed than both of us combined, right? I mean, yeah. So it's, like, it's a good balance with you with you two. I think about, I'm, like, yeah, I like that average. I'll be oh. in between. That's funny, because in my head, I was, like, I had this super calm person, and, like, like Janet, then I have you. There's three other and people, then, And then Janet's, it's like, okay. fuck. <laughs> you guys have already ex- explained everything, so now I don't know. <laughs> I actually never heard of that quote before. Really? Mm-mm. Oh, now you have. <laughs> yeah, so Janet, what is your average then? I'm curious. What is my average? Or what do you like, what is your take on that quote? Is it us two and then your academic friends? Oh, <laughs> that's oh, a good average. The dumb one. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I definitely, I feel like you ladies give me like a lot of, you create the like funness in my life, right? You yeah. have, you have such great energy and it feels like it's, you are my core day to day, like LA experience. And then the girls that, like my other friends that I keep in contact with, are mostly all in. I mean, the closest ones are in Orange County, but other than that, there's like Chicago and San Francisco, so they're quite far away. Mm. But there are girls that I've, yeah, met through like college and then through growing up. So I don't know how to describe. They're the mothers, right? They both have, like, actually, a couple of them have very maternal sides to them. Some of them are literally our mothers. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't. That's, that's, a good, that's a good average. I'm not sure. <laughs> that's a good average. I wondered, I'm, uh, now I'm just trying to think of my average. I do think a common theme with all my close friends is like they all like are really fun. Mm. Like you guys, my friends from back home, like Andrew, like they're all like fun people. But then I also have friends that aren't fun. No, <laughs> I mean, like, but I actually, I, actually I, I do have a way to describe um, kind of the people that I attract in my life that are really close. They're either maternal, like very maternal is one like one characteristic, very caretaking. Also very like high emotional EQ. And then also very strong females, like um, oh. like women who... Yeah, my other friend also works in finance. Mm, uh, that's true, And actually. then another friend in, like, consulting, like, management consulting. So, yeah, like, strong, strong, high-powered women, positive energy, very sociable. Holy crap. Yeah. 
I think Janet just nailed it in for me. That's what my common theme is with a lot of my female friends is that they're all really strong personalities and very like, I'm not going to take no shit from a man yeah, type yeah. of personality. They hold their own very well. And they're fun. So yeah. <laughs> good combo. So what's your suggestion for anyone who's listening and they feel a little lost? Maybe they're in like a gray zone and they're transitioning from probably not elementary to high school, but maybe from like high school to college or college to work, right? And they're in this place where they just feel like they don't have a lot of friends. I guess what can we suggest for people? Like for people are probably wondering like, oh, how did a lot of people ask us like, how did you ladies find each other and start this podcast? Right. Fate. Um, I think, (laughs) well, I think in periods of transition, you have to balance two things, right? One is to go out and meet new people. If you're, you know, just starting work or if you move to a new city, but also fostering the relationships that you do have. So putting in the extra effort to keep in touch with friends who have, you know, live in different places. So I think, yeah, having to do both of those and putting active effort into both. I think also... Put yourself in community groups or activities that you personally enjoy. You're most likely to find another person with the same interests as you, and you connect better that way, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we actually had a meetup in New York. That was our first yeah. meetup. Oh, yeah. That was like a month ago. And actually, a lot of people that were there started making friends with each other because there's only three of us, and we had like almost 50 people show up, which yeah. is crazy. But they were like talking amongst themselves and became friends yeah. with each other. And it's like, yeah, you share the same type of passion and also the same background and you kind of just like easily understand each other right Mm -hmm. so yeah if you show up at those events more likely than not maybe you might come away with like an instagram handle or something that's what people share (laughs) these days right they're like what's your instagram that's true so they can slide into your dm yeah Yeah. so so this is like kind of like another way for us to be like hey if we have another meetup you guys should come through and make friends there that's true yeah Yeah. meet other girls like you as you and your friends evolve you guys might hit different life stages at different times so due to that, I think your views on certain topics might vary, right? right. And that you might hit you might hit some road bumps along the way, right, Janet? Yeah. So for example, friends that, you know, you used to be able to talk about everything with. Mm-hmm. When you guys were like in high school and even college, you're kind of going at the same pace. You're both in classes. You might be dating casually. No one's like necessarily married yet. Mm-hmm. It's easier to relate on multiple levels. As you get older and as you age... People get married at different times. They start jobs at different times. Some people go through school first and then start jobs later. Mm -hmm. So there have been times where, you know, like I know that some conversations I might have with them because they're at a different place, we might feel like we misunderstand each other or we might Mm -hmm. almost like even rub each other the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So just being cognizant to not devalue the friendship because of that, just understanding it's it's coming from a place of you guys just having different perspectives at that time. And then also for yourself, just like self-protection, knowing which friends to talk to about what, right? Like it's hard for my married friends, bless their souls, they're, you know, so they care a lot but when I talk if I try to talk about being single with them sometimes I get you know very counter feedback so, <laughs> so I've learned now that you know if I'm going to talk about dating and what it is to be a single woman in her 30s I'm generally going to have those conversations with my girlfriends who are also single and in their 30s so I have a story to add on to that I swear I don't like have a lot of fallouts with friends but this is the second one and the only other one <laughs> we're the first um, but this was like a couple of years ago and it's when uh, Fresh Off the Boat came out so I think there were two schools of thought within the Asian community one would be that it's great you know there's something out there on a major TV network like that's amazing rah rah support whatever it is it might not tell everyone's story but at least it is a story that's out there mm-hmm. and then so that was actually my view of it mm-hmm. and then the other school of thought is like oh, but whatever goes out there has to be, like, incredibly good stuff. Like, I'm not going to support something Mm -hmm. that's just, in my mind, mediocre, right? So we we were in, like, the back of a cab going out clubbing. We probably had a few drinks on us, and we just started, like... It got to, like, a yelling phase. It got to, like, an arguing phase. And I was just like, that's not your story. And she's like, why didn't I need to have an accent, blah, blah, blah. You know, it got... Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's a lot of the conversation that people are actually having. And a lot of people were worried when uh, Crazy Rich Agents came out because Mm -hmm. they were like, oh, no one's going to really side with the story of, like, rich Singaporean Asians, right? Yeah. But I think the community realized that it was a big deal, Mm -hmm. that it's one story out there that's going to create this path or opening for everyone else to tell their stories. So, I mean, I'm kind of arguing my point here. Yeah. (laughs) That was one friendship where I thought she would have the same perspective as me. Mm -hmm. But I realized now that I should have been a little bit more sensitive to what she was thinking instead of like really Mm -hmm. fighting my point. At the same time, Mm -hmm. I feel like I should be able to like fight my points with my friends or or communicate. But then after that day, she just like totally cut me off. Recently, Uh. I texted her and said, hey, (laughs) remember the smell? (laughs) Yeah, we were at BCD. You texted her. (laughs) 
We were at was UCD, in New York? Tofu House in New York. Oh. So I just pulled up my phone. The message that I sent to her, 1.26 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thinking about you. Miss what we had, LOL. Hope you're doing well. No response. <laughs> uh, F you. Yeah. No, but I think that's a really strong takeaway though, Helen, that you should be able to have arguments with your friends. Like that should be, a, or I mean, maybe for her, I mean, that's not the type of friendship she wanted, right? right but yeah. that for some people that that, sh- that could be okay and that you could still have a relationship yeah. after. Yeah. But the fact that she pulled away, that's probably, I mean, that's if that's how she, maybe she just doesn't want contentious relationships, mm-hmm. but yeah. That's, I think that was a, that's nice. Yeah. So I miss you. <laughs> yeah. I think going back to what Jana was saying about different perspectives, it kind of reminded me when I was going through my breakup and sometimes some of my friends would tell me advice I just didn't want to hear. I mean, when you're going through a sensitive time, you're kind of, you kind you might take things personal, right? right? I think at first I was like, fuck, why is she telling me this? But then at that moment I was like, you know, realizing I don't want to vent to her because even though I'm good friends with her, what she's telling me isn't what I'm needing right now. Right, right. So I think internally, you, you also need to figure out, like, this is the type of advice or um, type of feedback I need and want right. versus I don't want to get shitted on, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... So something I've thought about more recently as well is in terms of being a good friend. I mean, actually sometimes just straight out asking your friend, like if they're, if they call you and they're going through a hard time, like what can I do for you right now? Mm. And then they can articulate, I need you to support me right now. And then I would play that supportive role, right? Or I need you to be straight with me and tell me even Mm. if it's like bad. I mean, there's on the one hand, it's like you have your friends that you know that they'll always just be straight with you and tell you the truth. But I realize that not everyone receives that well, right? Even if it's coming from a good place. So now it's like, I try to take the perspective of who am I talking to and like asking them directly like how how mm-hmm. can I support you I agree actually that's probably why we don't try and like fix friendships as much because we have we don't just have one friend in romantic relationships that's why we're so like contentious about like finding our points and making yeah. sure that they hear us and they talk to us a certain way when we come to them with issues right mm-hmm. it's like just listen or then you start getting angry and mad but like to a friend who's giving you bad advice you're just like all right I'm not gonna come to you anymore for yeah. advice <laughs> I'm noticing that I have a friend so she has a boyfriend and I feel like she vents him about everything and I'm just like there are times where you need to actually turn to your friend and not dump everything on your boyfriend because I feel like he's getting overwhelmed Mm -hmm. with that so just also noting when to go to your significant other and go to your friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I do think people put too much weight on their relationships versus like their friendships that they already developed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And actually, I think um, it's those types of conversations and even those fights that really strengthen a relationship, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, not being afraid to have direct conversations with your friends. So ladies, what do you want to tell me? <laughs> do you guys um fart around other people? Because we've gone to a level after this new york trip where <laughs> we just pretty sure i smelled both your oh my gosh no we were at no. in a public space <laughs> enjoying some art <laughs> no, this is so okay, embarrassing. Okay. we were at the guggenheim in new york and um i was just, <laughs> like quietly observing art i look to my left and mel walks over to me she walks over to me and I'm like, hey, Mel. And then I literally ate her fart. I ate her fart. I was just like, what the fuck? No one else around me. And I'm just like, thanks, Mel. No, and I walk away. No, I think. I level know. of your relationship no, honestly, took it to the next level. Speaking of gas, I need a burp. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know why. Fuck. Why'd you walk towards me? No, okay, I honestly, understand. I was there first. I was there first. You were not there first. <laughs> I saw you walking towards me. <laughs> Sorry. There were like these different like notebooks from the artist and like they're in this display. And I, I think I saw Helen. I was like, I'm going to walk over to look too. And it happened to be a little extra gassy. <laughs> and I tried to do what Janice technique, like, you know, part your butt cheeks. Part your butt cheeks. And it just came out quiet. And I was like, I'm going to Thanks. And then I felt like a solid in my mouth. And then I was like, I'm going to walk away. And Helen turns to me. She goes, did you fucking fart? And I go, fuck. (laughs) She's like, I fucking just ate your fart. (laughs) That was pretty embarrassing because I really, I thought it was quiet so you wouldn't notice. Well, hello. It was lethal. Are you kidding me? Uh, I should have embarrassed you by saying it louder. No. We're at a museum. We gotta be refined and shit. So we're at that level of friendship. Guys, what are the best kinds of ships? Friendships! <laughs> but this wraps up today's episode on the topic of friendship. So for the takeaway for today's episode is to understand that as you grow and you evolve, so will your friendships. So people might come and go, but don't take it too hard and don't take it too personal. You're evolving as well. Yes. And again, to the quote from earlier, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So maybe take yeah. some time and reflect on that. Who are the people that you're actually surrounding yourself with? And do they make you better? 
right? And do you feel very comfortable with your friends? Because with your close group of friends, like you should be able to just really be yourself. You can catch us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at Asian Boss Girl. And if you guys like today's episode, leave a ship in our comments and our recent ah. Instagram post. And you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, Google Play. We are newly on Spotify as well. Yeah, yeah. Give us a subscribe or a follow and we'll just pop up in your feed. Also, leave us rating. We prefer the five. Um, <laughs> and we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.